doing it right in front of us. We're letting them get away with it. Hello and welcome to This Is. Apple will be scamming you even more than they've ever scammed you before. Is that how you're gonna start this? Uh, this is how I'm gonna start this because the Android fanboys are gonna be out for this one. So the iPhone 14, surprise, surprise, is right around the corner. And because of that, we actually have a lot of information on what to expect as the latest generation of iPhone. And F's in the chat, boys, because the worst news of all, the iPhone mini is no more. I feel personally responsible for that because the iPhone 12 was my favorite phone of all time. The mini, specifically. The mini. And I regret not getting the mini this time around. The iPhone thir 13 uh, mini counted for only 3% oh. of iPhone sales all last quarter. So they have decided to discontinue it, and they will be replacing it with the iPhone 14 Max. So essentially... The layout is gonna be four phones again, but instead of having a small, two medium, and a large, instead they're going to have the base iPhone 14s, which is gonna be the medium and the large, and then the pro models, which will also come in medium and large yep. size, which makes sense. I think they're gonna sell a whole lot more of the bigger, less expensive Max phones. Yeah, I remember when the when it was the 8 Plus, so many people got the 8 Plus because they said they wanted the bigger uh, screen. Presumably, uh, it's gonna come with the bigger battery life. Oh, of course, the, yeah. You know, uh, like, yeah. I just can't imagine that it wouldn't. Well, the Mini's always been a little bit constrained. Also, you know, with 3% of the market share having That's it. That's so sad. Most people didn't actually use it. Yeah. So, they were judging a book by its cover. However, where mm. Apple's gonna be scamming you in No, they've already scammed us, Matt. It's already, the scam is already done. They gave us a taste of the good life with the mini phone. Yeah. And then Tim Cook maniacally laughs as he rips it away from <laughs> us and gives us another big chunky boy and tells us to shut up and be happy. Shut up and be happy, Austin. Well, I tell you what the real scam is. Due to chip shortages and uh, constraints and blah, 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 the base model 14s will be using this current generation A15 Bionic chips. All of the new generation of phones and one of the big selling points is that they all had the latest cutting edge chip inside. And traditionally knowing Apple, they've delivered super, super high performance. Again, you think about like on the iPhone mini, on the iPhone SE, these have the most powerful processor in any phone, and yet they're smaller, they're cheaper, et cetera, yep. et cetera. In the past, especially when you look at like the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 12, there weren't really huge differences between the regular iPhone and the Pro, no. right? There was some stuff there, but it was like, oh, it's like the stainless steel versus the aluminum. Who cares, right? But what we're seeing now is that there are going to be real differences going up to that pro model. So the processor will likely be significantly different. Now, that being said, we don't actually know with the A16 if no. it's a big jump or a small jump, but no. are you gonna be able to tell the difference? Oh, I bet like, most people will not. No, you can't tell the difference now between generations. You know, maybe if you're upgrading from like three, four years ago, maybe, yeah. but from year to year, no, you cannot. You can't tell the difference. I have a bold claim that may not be all that bold at all. <laughs> the 14 pro models, Yep will have the new pill plus hole punch oh, combo, whereas right. the base models will still have a notch. That move has nothing to do with function, and that is strictly just to be able to take two models of the same generation and be like, that's the pro, that's not. The footprint of them is near identical. Now, it is a smaller notch on the 14 than, we, than we're used to, but again, not massively different. I've been saying this for a while. That's why they haven't moved away from the notch yeah. for years. It's is because branding. again, it's you can look on an icon and see that is an iPhone because yeah. it's got that little notch there. If you think about it from Apple's perspective, from the front of an iPhone, mm -hmm. they've been basically identical since 2017, right? So we're talking about five years of iPhones that have all looked pretty much the same. Yeah, sure, the notch is slightly shrunk. And yeah, if you look at like the side or the back of a phone, it's a little different. But most people have a case on it. Most people don't realize that there's a big difference. There is a report that Touch ID will come back, but that has been pretty much every rumor yeah. since Touch ID went away. I will be very surprised if we see that on these new iPhones. And there will be other upgrades though. Well, the report is that it'll be under display. It's never been that good. It's gotten better. You know what though? I actually kind of disagree a little bit. So up until the S22 generation, I have not been a big fan. I've always felt like it's a half step behind. I know that even on the S22, it's not quite as fast as a real physical uh, fingerprint sensor. That being said, this is the first phone I've used with a fingerprint sensor and under the display, which I feel like I am not having and to wait any significant amount of time for. It actually is very, very good at this point. This is where I could see this might be the year that they actually do bring they it back. They could do it if they want. The question yeah. is, do they even care, right? Right, which, I don't think they do because they put all that time and effort into making face id work even with masks yeah. and stuff like that apple loves to not bring something out until they're completely satisfied with it yep and i know i would not have been satisfied with a under display fingerprint sensor up until this generation yeah the clear trend here with the iphone this year and over the last us 
Let me they're scamming us? They're doing it right in front of us. We're letting them get away with it. We're making a video calling them out for it. Is that getting, letting them get away with it? Okay, so I think it's really clear that the trend right now is that Apple is trying to separate between the cheaper iPhone models, so 12, 13, 14, but the base models and the Pro, which to be fair, makes sense. You know, if you put the name Pro on a phone, you expect it to be better. You make the Pro phone better. Don't make the non-Pro phone worse, right? And so Especially with the price. We'll get into price in a second because I'll we'll talk about scams. The big question here is like, again, well, why am I buying the 14 if I can just get a 13, which mm -hmm. have, will have the same processor? Yeah. The new body style, it's like a more rounded version of the 13. Maybe. It's so a somewhere little, between the 12 yeah, and yeah. the 13. But the 14 just sounds exactly like mm -hmm. a 13. The one thing that might be uh, included in the base models is a 90 hertz display based on some of the panels that uh, LG will be making for them, which can do 90 hertz. Yeah. But we did say that this was the first generation of the, uh, well, specifically the 13th was the first generation that we felt like, yeah, we're actually getting pro features in the pro mm -hmm. phone. I agree with you. I don't want to have like just a shittier version of the other phone yeah. to not to justify that. So to run down the specs really quickly, the main differentiating features that we know of right now between the iPhone 14 and the 14 Pro, the 14 will have the older processor, whereas the 14 Pro will have the new. You'll have a notch on the 14 versus the pill plus little punch yeah. on the Pro. The Pros will also have new cameras. So it does seem like the main camera will likely be upgraded to 48 megapixels. Which is a massive upgrade in the, from the past. It does seem like a little bit of the advantage to go into the higher megapixel count is to enable 8K video which is something that other devices have had for several years now at this point. And it all sucks. AK video on a, a cell phone is garbage. But there are practical advantages of having more megapixels, especially now that cameras and lenses and sensors have gotten big enough to actually resolve that much detail. Because previously 12 was fine. But nowadays, like if you have like one of the new S22s or something, you take a 48 megapixel or 100 megapixel still, there actually is an appreciable amount of difference of, as far as the detail goes compared to <laughs> What Sorry. you need for that cough is the wonderful taste of sugar-free Red Bull. I know you all texted in to <laughs> two 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 four four six eight four do play nine. <laughs> Here's, I think, where the real difference is going to be, right? Which is going to be price. So by default, right? So just for context, right now, iPhone 13 mini is $700. The 13 regular size is $800. The Pro is 1000 the Pro Max is $1,100. So that's where we're at right yep. now. So right off the bat, the mini disappears. So $700 iPhone, poof, gone. Poof. Instead, it will be replaced by the larger iPhone 14 Max. Where things get nefarious, the Pros have gotten a price hike. Theoretically. Theoretically. Due to rumors. So supposedly the Pros are gonna start at $1,100, which is a $100 price hike from what they normally do. If the Pros are a more Pro phone, I'm okay with that, but here's where I think Apple should not do that. Okay. Apple is sitting on a smog level of gold and doubloons in a cave somewhere. They have so much goddamn Ooh, money. Wait, 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 Matt. This is their chance to completely shed the overpriced garbage persona. If they kept their phones at the same price, will every other phone carrier increase because due to nah, inflation? I got, actually got a hard disagree with you on I, this one. If you look at the iPhone, the pro model, mm -hmm. right? So starting with the iPhone 10 and going all the way up, it has started at 999 for five years. Mm -hmm. Now, am I going to sit here and tell you that they should be charging more for phones. I actually am. If you literally just look at inflation since 2017 to 2022, it's gonna be more than $100. Just to sell this phone $1,100 is going to be cheaper than the $1,000 phone that they used to sell. Now, mind you, the iPhone 10 was very aggressively priced. That was the first real flagship that hit $1,000. Everyone was like, oh my God. And then six months later, everyone had a thousand dollar phone out, right? If they continue to improve the phone or hell, if they don't even improve the phone at all, if they just keep selling a pro level device, inflation by itself means a hundred dollar price jump is perfectly reasonable because they didn't become the, one of the world's most valuable companies due to charity because they feel like they just want to have enough cash now and they're just going to start, start selling I, phones. At I get what prices. you're saying, but if they adopt more of a console mentality of take a slight hit on the device what? to get more people what? into the ecosystem, Matt, no, they are absolutely. printing money with the app store. You know what they print if money they on? Can... Selling thousand dollar phones that they make for $400 each. No, 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 no. I hard no, disagree. No, hard disagree. No. How they many people 
do you think are buying an iPhone at $1,100 and $1,000? How many people do you think that $100 is gonna mean, oh, I'm not gonna buy the iPhone? Almost everyone who buys an iPhone Pro or a fan of iPhone are gonna buy an iPhone no matter what. It they doesn't, charge $1, it doesn't for it, take that much to make up that $100 if, you, if you've got someone else in the ecosystem. What they're gonna do is they're not gonna buy the Pro. If someone thinks that price jump is too much, they're gonna buy the regular iPhone for a couple hundred dollars less, but they're not gonna not buy an iPhone. Tim Cook is a smart guy. He knows a thing or two about making a, a few billy here or there. All I'm saying is if they if they went out of their way to keep the price down while everyone else is raising but their- But they already have, is my argument. For four years, they've kept their flagship but phone so at the exact else. same price. No, everyone's been cranking up and cranking up and cranking up. No. Samsung have brought some of their foldables down a little Sa bit. Samsung has just made so many different phones at every price point for like $50 increments that yeah, you're not getting an S22, but the specs are so close that you're not telling the difference between that. Apple is a company who's been wildly successful at making very smart business decisions. Mm -hmm. They have run the numbers. Tim Cook has an army of accountants to figure out if we raise the price of this iPhone by $100, how many sales do we lose? How much money do we make on another 100 times millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions? And I think you're wrong, but let us know in the comments what you think. Is Apple scamming us more than they've ever done before? Is Austin a shill for Apple? But let us know. Like, subscribe, ring-a-ling, the ding-a-ling bell. There, I gave it to you. I compromised with you on that. We'll catch you in the next one.